Oh, well, um, my name is Marcio Lima. This is um, Young, and we're in the design strategy of in Snapchat. And we're going to basically go over Lens Studio, which is our augmented reality Lens Studio. And once we get that going, we can display a little bit of that. All right, so what I have here, uh, is it play? All right. So what I have here is a 3D uh, interactive object. And anytime you tap this object, and I think if you'll see that I have a 3D character and he, he lives in his own uh, three-dimensional world. And you can use this with, when, once you open up Snapchat, anybody with the snap code is allowed to use it. So. And what I'm going to do today is uh, we're going to open up Lens Studio, and I'll do a live demo of the interface. And then I'll hand it to Myung, and he'll show you what he did for the Metro card, where he did a, a MTA card, I mean, a Metro card. Yeah, I can just go. Uh, so this is a uh, Lens Studio, and we um, we released it a couple years back, and it's free to the public, and anybody can go on it and create these really awesome selfie and world lenses to share with the world, and we have a lot of fun doing it, and I think uh, it's just important to just have these uh, creative experiences and just with technology and sharing it with people every day is uh, just a great thing that we we enjoy doing, and. Uh, uh, I can just go into the live demo. All right, so this is a uh, Lens Studio, and you can see we have a couple of different templates. We have a uh, we have a uh, a, a, a sunglasses uh, template. We have Market Tech template, which Myung will be going over. This is how he did uh, his Metro card. We have a couple of our newer templates, and then we have our static 3D. And the reason for these templates is just for anybody who has no 2D or 3D experience, they could just go on here and they'll be able to create their own AR experiences. So for this one, I'll probably, I'm going to go into the interactive approach. Um, all right, so once we're in Lens Studio, you can see our, uh, hold on a second. Do you, do you want to hold? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so once we're in Lens Studio, uh, it's a pretty um, uh, complex interface, but we try to simplify it so anybody can just use it. Uh, over here in the middle, you can see that this is our 3D space. And if I toggle on to the, to the 2D scene, you'll be able to see that you can also have 2D objects in this specific area. I'm going to move on to here. Um, all the way on our left side where our objects panel is, this is where we apply our 2D and 3D objects, and you can also add uh, specific effects depending on what you're trying to create. Down here, we have our resources. This is if you have any like native objects, a 2D like Photoshop or PNGs that you want to implement into your uh, actual lens. Um, all the way over here on the left, this is where the inspector panel, and what this is, uh, allows you to do is just control all your all your objects and. If your effects have any specific um, like properties, you're able to adjust it over here on this side. Um, over here on the preview panel, you'll see that our 3D uh, animated object, this is how you can see it living in its world. Um, we also have a live webcam view. And this is, uh, for instance, like you could see myself and what your lens will actually look like. And if I wanted to add something like, all right, let me add like a, face effect, you can add like a, a face stretch and you're allowed to just do th things in, uh, you know, in real time, which is really cool because before you actually 
publish this lens, you can see what that uh, will look like, which is, which is really fun because you have all these different um, kind of effects. Like if I'll just do another one, for instance, it's called Face Liquify. And we just like, we want people to have fun and just create these really creative lenses and just just go wild with it and would basically just be the selfie portion of it. But I'll move back to the 3D side of things. Um, next, uh, over here, still on the preview panel, you have a couple of different options. <laughs> and you can see our little 3D animated object is waking up. We have different um, previews. We can have a, a sky, uh, stairs, and if you want to test what uh, it looks like in selfie, which I just uh, displayed within the webcam, but we're gonna stay in the patio. Next, I'll, I'll just move into just applying a 3D object and just showing a simple script. Have options from uh, having a, a sphere, a box, and sorry, I'm moving a little fast, but. <laughs> So yeah, once you, you have your 3D object in here, um, the cool thing about this program is you, it's uh, very script heavy and you can apply any kind of code. But we also have uh, some template uh, codes that you can use. In order, so if I wanted to move this shape, well, let me just scale it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, we would move on to the help this, helper script. And if you go on to your tween manager, you'll see Apply here, uh, apply a simple movement to it. Okay, so, and if I wanted to have this uh, box move, I would just go to its components. And if any of you are familiar with Unity, uh, this has a very uh, uh, similar workflow. So I'm gonna add a script. I'll just use the tween transform. You could do things like, let's just, for this, we can just do a scale. And uh, let me just. So now, if I wanted my script to work correctly, uh, apply a ping pong and this is all like uh, just the script controlling my object and if if you wanted to actually just um, control what's going on in the script you can see that it's also over here so if you you are very advanced and you want to apply some kind of animation to it you can also control it in here um, yeah this is just a really basic overview of what Lens Studio is. I'm going to hand it off to Myung and he'll go over how he created his market tech next. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, hi, I'm Myung. I'm also a motion designer. I work with Marcio. We create ads. Um, so a little story behind this marker tag. Um, so this mark, marker tag is, they just launched around, I think, a year, year ago or something like that. And then we were still learning process of this marker tag technology. Um, and while we were playing around with it, I was thinking maybe like um, I saw MTA card and I thought everyone can easily access it and everyone has it if you're in New York. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll use this marker, uh, MTA as a marker, and uh, I was thinking something I got to create about it. So that's why I started. Um, I'm still learning Lens Studio as well. Um, but this was, yeah, I just create my own um, myself. I'll just show you basic process of how I did it. So um, basically, I use a 3D program called Cinema 4D. So basically, I create all these assets from this 3D program. And then you can import that into uh, Lens Studio that we just showed uh, demoing you guys. So uh, basically, if you see the first one, 
I just create a simple railroad animation. Uh, and then I export it and also train, I uh, train. And then also I just create lights and uh, all the environment. And I bring it all into a lens studio. And then with the marker tag uh, template, I can test it out. So they give you, so I just record myself of uh, seeing how it looks on a, uh, with a Metro card. And then I just bring it in there. I got to make, uh, make a correction of the size and lighting and everything. Um, and then, yeah, that's how I create it. But it, it was so simple. I mean, everyone has it. So everyone loves it. Like they can easily just swipe it uh, and then uh, scan the code and they play around with it. Um, yeah, and um, I think we still have a little more time. So, so this was the recording of what it looks like. It's really simple, but if you guys have a Snapchat app, uh, you guys can scan it and then play around with it. <laughs> really? <laughs> hilarious <laughs> oh maybe yeah I'll try next one um, but uh, also this was really beginning um, and people liked it so I was thinking maybe I should try another one with a uh, same metro card um, that's how I did with this one I just want to create a small New York City on uh, on a metro card same um, same process. I create everything, 3D uh, object in uh, Cinema 4D, and I export it to um, uh, Lens Studio, and I make everything uh, organized in Lens Studio. Um, yeah, and then um, this is the actual video, and then this is also Snap Code. If you guys would like, uh, play around with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so um, I'm familiar with Snap, but maybe some people here aren't. Um, how, how would you activate the Snap code? Oh, yeah. If you guys have a Snapchat app, um, you open up and then hold the screen on a Snap code, it will unlock. Uh, So well, I'm, I'm curious, what makes a good uh, marker? Oh, OK. So uh, marker, I'm not 100% understand how it works, but it yeah. reads the image of, so you can set what image can be your marker. Right. So uh, you can do uh, that Omnicard, MetroCard. Don't, I think what, uh, can be a good. Yeah. Do you mean like uh like what's a good uh? Yeah, like if if let's say someone here wanted to do one of these and they wanted to pick something to trigger trigger an experience and make it on Lens Studio, like uh, what should they avoid picking or what should they pick as a trigger for the experience? For me, I think um, just anything that people use daily, I, I feel is a good uh, image to market tech only because. Uh, they'll, they'll have it like this was a perfect example because everybody has a metro card in their pocket so i think in those in those cases like, even like something like maybe the nba logo or like a yankees logo where everybody ha has a hat in the city with with that specific logo is a good example because then they'll be able to also experience this I guess the the separate question is like what makes what makes a good uh, kind of AR experience? So, like, are there certain principles that you would use uh, or you would try to follow when you're developing or making one of these animations yeah. um, to make them like the best possible? One important thing is we have limited uh, four megabytes only. But when you create something, you have to always keep in mind. And you, I tested a lot because 
3D. Sometimes it's really heavy. Sometimes it's really light. So I always bring it in, and sometimes it's like way bigger. So always keep in mind of size of the uh, whole whole project. Um, and also, yeah, uh, your previous question also. Um, don't choose any too many repetitive um, images as a marker. Won't read well. Like a re re repeated message. Like uh, dot 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 dot. Oh, yeah, just like pattern. patterns. Yes, yeah, exactly. Patterns. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, it has to be kind of. It has to be like a very iconic, like um, distinct marker for it to be useful. And um, this Lens Studio is free. So if you go to the website, you guys can download it. There's also tutorials um, and templates as well. So if you guys are don't worry that. Yeah, we do have geofencing, but we normally go through like our a AMs or they they handle it in the back end. We we, it, we created this like uh, organically, but if it was through like went through like proper guidelines, you are able to just geofence a location and have that specific lens. I mean, I'm curious if using the scripting function of Lens Studio, you could probably hit endpoints. Uh, I, I haven't dabbled too much in the scripting, but I feel like there are, there are ways to, to make calls like with, with that script, right? So as long as you have the endpoints. Uh, okay. This was my personal just a project, but uh, I'm sure there is like, if we not, I'm not like programmer or anything, but I'm sure you can do something with uh, like real time, like when the train comes in with a metro card marker, I think that might work. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Um, no, actually, if you download um, Lens Studio program, show you really quickly. So this is the program, right? Once you like it, um, on the website, there's all the tutorials how you publish uh, your lenses. But here, you see published lens. Once you click it, right now Wi-Fi is not working. So, but uh, <laughs> uh, once you click it, it will. Uh, you have to set your name, publish it. If it's under four megabytes, and then once you publish it, lens team will review it if there's any like violence, some um, legal issues. Um, Otherwise, it will give you like uh, approved in within like a couple minutes, so you don't have to go through anything. But yeah, it will send it through. Uh, it will send you the snap code through your email. Saying if say that again. Yeah. Shake it. Yeah, we actually have a couple of scripts within uh, Lens Studio, which allows you to have specific triggers. Uh, even if it is shaking, it would uh, trigger a certain animation that you implement. With it. You have two more minutes. Do you do you have any other things that you're you're going to show? Up the file to show them or. Yes, open up the file. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody in here do 3D? All right, just us? Cool. <laughs>
actually, while, while the project is opening. So your question brings up a good one, right? Which is most people who want to do this don't have the maybe like the skills or the the time to like start going on the motion design path that y'all have a lot of experience in. So how would they find collaborators? Or maybe like how where where can they find motion designers to work with uh, in order to realize one of these? That's it. Yeah. Well, you know, is there like a is, is there like a marketplace or is there a community or where can I find someone who is like really good at the modeling part where I can kind of go like, oh well, this is the idea, this is maybe like the programmed kind of behavior, this is the trigger I want, and they would work on the model, you know. That's a great question, and um, I don't even think, it doesn't have to be necessarily just a motion designer. It could even just be somebody who uses Photoshop. Um, I think it, we also have like, um, uh, it's a Giphy integration where you can use their animations on there. So if you are a developer who just wants to test out a few triggers and um, you want also animation, you can use the Giphy on, uh, that uh, is already implemented there, and you can go ahead and just start testing these things. But if you're looking for a community, there's a, a lot of forums online. There's places like Video Copilot, and you can just start there. And yeah, I, um, but yeah, that is a great question. Like, and I, I don't know how many developers want to just collaborate, but that's a great point. Like, we should be collaborating with developers more often because I think and those two mindsets together, you could, you, we could create some really amazing things, you know. Here's the project. Put it from um, Cinema 4D. So, I just separate them, let's say, this is the column. You can just around, and you will see live updates of just like a 3D program. Uh, live updates on a preview panel. So yeah, but um, again, create everything in 3D. You can't really, you can't create something really simple stuff in uh, Lens Studio, but mostly, most of the time, I create myself. Uh, my stuff in 3D program or um, 2D animations in different programs, and I import that into Lens Studio and make that happen in, in here. I wish I can show you the Lens Studio website, but uh, it's not here. both but if you have a little bit complicated motion like let's say that uh, if you see this one um like rail the railroad is coming just down like uh, simultaneously something like a little bit complicated animations i created in in uh, and import all these uh animation uh, part two Awesome, thank you.